Kia ora everyone and welcome back to Humankind. Today we have some very exciting news. As if we needed any more information to come along with the Fabius Maximus update, previously the October patch update, now the early November patch update, Boy, did we have some Wampa news today. Modding tools in beta are coming to humankind innately within humankind, and they are coming out as a beta version when the Fabius Maximus update releases, which is expected to be within the first week of November or early November anyway. So here we have it. Modding tools in a beta form accessible through Steam. You know when they're coming, now let's talk about what we're getting and how it can be used. How do these tools change the game? Not just for people who are interested in making mods, which maybe is a few of you, but more importantly to people who can play them and watch them, which is all of us. So they're coming in a beta form, which will be slightly restricted uh, based on what the uh, developers, Amplitude Studios, had initially intended on launching, uh, of course, alongside the game. They actually acknowledged this uh, at the start of their update. They said something like, uh, you know, frankly, uh, they still need a bit of work, but we didn't want to keep them back any longer. So we've decided to release a beta version. They're incomplete, missing some features like AI modding, and we may run into some bugs and errors along the way as a result. All good. So how will we play with mods? We'll have some good news and some other news. The other news is it won't be uh, directly through the Steam Workshop. The good news is it will be able to be innately managed through Humankind's community section under the mods uh, tab, right? So under the community screen, within the mods tab, here you will be able to select which of in the installed mods you would like to activate or deactivate for the next match, right? You choose them from a list at the bottom of the screen, uh, and if some mods come up in different orders, the order that you load them in is important too, but you can drag and drop them around. So they'll be there, they'll be on display, you can maneuver them how you like, and enable or disable them. So then you're probably wondering, well, if they're not fed innately through the Steam Workshop, then where are they being fed through? The answer is where they've always been fed through so far. That is mod.io. That is the website where you download custom maps for humankind, as well as humankind mods. I assume, I don't know, but I assume it's because, of course, humankind runs on many different uh, platforms, not just Steam. It runs on various other platforms within the sort of PC uh, marketplace, the PC dimension. So I suppose it makes sense that it runs through mod.io anyway. That's not part of the discussion. The discussion here, more importantly, is that this will be innately built into the game. Which naturally makes us think, well, how do we get the mods in the first place? And the good news is we can browse for new mods from in the game itself by following the browse button at the top of the mods screen. Uh, that'll open up a mod browser where essentially you all of your available mods through mod.io will be there for you to search through and sort through in various ways. The good thing here is, sure, it's happening through a third party, whether you think that's good, bad, or otherwise, I don't really mind, because it's all sort of built in, and it seems like it's going to be a fairly natural innate function that won't have me searching around different tabs and different areas to try and pull everything into one place. Wonderful. So, how would we go about creating a modding project, or if, like me, you're not that creative, how are these projects made, and what can be added to them? To create a mod for Humankind, we'll need to run Humankind modding tools, which we can get through the Steam Library Tools section, if that is your thing. Essentially then, it brings up kind of a mod editor to configure it, to add in some data. That's where you might add the author's name, a description, some release notes, all of that fun stuff that you might want to share with people, or read about a mod as a consumer of said mod. The tools that you use to create it will ask you to install Unity Hub and Unity, Unity Editor and blah blah blah. We're not too concerned about those specific details, but moreover, what kind of changes can be made in these mods? Well, the developers give some reasonable feedback and actually quite a useful, although somewhat niche, example. So, when it comes to actually making changes within a mod, once the preliminary work, as they describe, is out of the way, 
Uh, even if you want to, say, add something new to the game, like a new unit for a certain culture or what have you, uh, they recommend it's often easiest to work off existing imported data uh, from within the game. This is normal. Uh, you can do that by going into the mod editor and pulling things from the archives. The example they give is if you, for example, wanted to change the howitzer's ability from shatter to indirect shatter, allowing it to fire over obstacles. This is a very niche change, I'm not sure there are many modders out there who find that at the top of their list, but nonetheless, I think that's a pretty good example of the kinds of things that many of us could be able to do with this tool relatively easily. Uh, changing and tweaking certain unit types, adding replacements, uh, so on and so forth. Thinking about the possibilities uh, in the future of this and what this could look like for not just custom maps that we already have, but custom cultures custom variants of existing cultures with their own units. It's exciting. It is actually really exciting, but I shouldn't get ahead of myself because this is, of course, but the beta announcement for some tools that are dropping in early November. But let me carry on with my example about making changes. So uh, actually, with their example, they go on to say, uh, you know, aren't there different folders for different units? Uh, building on this howitzer example, you know, what about tags and definitions and so on? And essentially the answer is yes, there's a whole load of rich data for you to dig through to try and change different things, but you don't need to be too hung up about all the different elements like the UI and the descriptors and so on and so forth. You can focus on the unit speciality alone and leave everything else the same if you wish. So then how did these changes, whether we've made them or we're just keen to try them, how do they become playable? How do we actually access these mods, right? Once a mod maker is satisfied with any changes they've made within their mod and they decide to make it playable, they can do so in one of two ways. Essentially, they can export it, obviously, and then build and run or simply build, right? So they can build and run, i.e. throw themselves into a game with the mod available, or they can build it up to enable uh, the mod to manually be enabled within the game. For example, if they were, you know, handing it around to test it or what have you, where you can just sort of drag and drop it into the uh, documents community folder like we do at the moment for uh, custom maps, if anyone else like me has tried some of those. <laughs> anyway, once you've confirmed and tested that the mod is indeed working, if you're the creator, it's time to share it with everybody. And how do we have these mods shared with us? Well, it's actually... Thankfully, again, fairly streamlined and straightforward, can be uploaded to mod.io directly from within the modding tools, log into your mod.io account, export it to the world, and then of course it can be browsed in-game. And that is essentially it. So we're getting these mod tools early November. That's about all I have to say on them. I'm not a massive modder, but I'm looking forward to trying out your creations even with the beta version. Thank you very much for joining me for this spicy, spicy gameplay and a really exciting announcement for the future of humankind. I'll see you next time.